So 1986 was a huge year for two bands who blew up after two albums that didn't quite do as well as they should have done. They would have been relegated to the theatre circuit had these albums um, continued in the third album way. So had the third albums not come out and blown up and be the two biggest rock albums of 1986 or metal or hair metal, stadium rock, whatever you want to call it, these bands would be playing in coliseums as opposed to arenas or stadiums. Now, I've seen Heavy Metal Guru and all other channels, and these two albums get compared a lot. So let's compare the two with the Kerrang! reviews I've actually got. Slippery When Wet, Bon Jovi versus Pyromania by Def Leppard. Absolutely huge production. Songwriting teams, you've got Mutt Lang helping out on the production and that. And then Bon Jovi obviously had Desmond Child with a songwriting. This was make or break for both. I'd say Def Leppard had the better start. They had a huge fan base in um, America sort of catching already, more so than in Britain. But I'd say of the two, Def Leppard probably had a stronger little pedigree, plus a stronger touring resume where Bon Jovi was supporting the Scorpions, Kiss, but Leppard was supporting DC and a lot of other bands and were getting a big reputation also for being sellouts. But that's another still story, who cares, man? They did sell out arenas and stadiums, yeah. So, we're going to start, the way I'm going to do it, like usual, song by song, song versus song, track versus track, and that just could be by default, but track versus track, what works as an album, <laughs> and both are absolutely massive in melodies and songs, one's more production based, more atmospheric, one is mainly about good times, but, which we know that one, <laughs> I've got two versions of Slippery actually, yeah, uh, I know which cover I prefer, this is the Japanese edition, um, my mate gave it me on my birthday and I was like yes, now I've got two copies, so it's just great, yeah, um, right, let's get to it, two albums that are fantastic, so we're going to start with Def Leppard, Rock Till You Drop. Has a good opening, very solid. Very good ACDC vibe riff there. Not amazing, just a good opener. I prefer the rock, 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 like the bridge, the drop off. And it has a decent chorus. I prefer the intro to the chorus. You know it's coming in. I give that a 7 out of 10. I don't think it's anything else. That gets a 7 for me. So we got Let It Rock by Bon Jovi opening up. And usually on this you've got David Bryan. <laughs> love the old intro. And I just love the... <laughs> and then straight into it. It has an absolutely bombastic verse and I prefer now I saw Roxy the drums are absolutely huge it was recorded in Vancouver with um, Bruce Fairbrain and he recorded Loverboy so he was going for that huge sound and Loverboy were all over the charts at the same at the time so they went to Vancouver um, to do it the sound on Let It Rock is absolutely phenomenal. I love the production. And even though the song itself isn't like, wow, I prefer it to rock till you drop. And But as it stands alone, I think it's a 7.58. Definitely gets an 8 for me. Not a 9 or a 10, but a definite opener and a great riff. And just a good fun time song. So for me, Let It Rock wins out on that. It's a great song. Okay, next we've got Photograph by Def Leppard. What can you say about this song, man? It is absolutely fantastic from start to finish. The riff is great. The, um, the melody, dark, like the police message in a bottle. That vibe I'm going on. And I just think Photograph is just one of them songs you just can't deny. Like, you got some dun, 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 the tension that builds up to the chorus. 
is just insane. Um, and then you've got the chorus itself. These guys had choruses on top of choruses on top of choruses. Then hooks. They didn't need the bridges and the tunnels like Meatloaf. They just had the hooks after hooks after hooks. And it worked and it was always layered upon layered. Photograph is a perfect exam example of a like pop metal masterstroke. It's pop, it's metal. And the photograph, the harmonies. Do, 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 do. And then it builds back in. Sensational. Um, a 10. A 10. Possibly an 11. Next, we've got You Give Love a Bad Name, Bon Jovi. <sighs> Sensational song. Sensational from the opener. Shot for the heart. The, 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 you know, the... And then just before the guitar comes in and the drum... It's just already... Already, you know, we've not even hit the verse. We've not even hit the verse and you're already going. That usually comes in the, the chorus, the part where you rock. Nah, this starts it. The chorus is in the intro. What a song. I mean, I prefer a photograph, but You Give Love, like, as a song, it's just a way in order. But You Give Love a Bad Name is absolutely incredible. And uh, again, it's another 10 for me. Um, I just, it's, it's the video, it's not even the video, it's just a song itself, it's an angel smiles, what you say? <laughs> yeah, um, very first kiss was your first kiss, goodbye with a keyboard, and then the whoa, and then do, 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 do. everything was just about boom, everything's boom from the verse to the chorus, it's so big. 10 out of 10. So next we've got Stage Fright by Def Leppard. Now, for me already, the trajectory is shifting because Stage Fright, similar to Photograph in the chorus. Won't you do, yeah, do, do, do. It's got, um, again, that police, that melancholic rush vibe as well. Proggy elements. Um, the intro's great. Say welcome to the show. I've seen the video and then um, great tension, atmosphere, and then do night all night. I want you to do, yeah. Um, and it builds again, and then you've got the guitar, a very euphoric song, and it gets a nine for me. It doesn't get a 10 because I feel like the verse on a lot of these out songs is better than the actual chorus stage, right. Oh, night, okay, like hockey chants, if you will, like football game chants. But the the actual guitar layers are sensational and very dark and prehistoric in vibes as well. Like Iron Maiden mixed with a little bit of futuristic. The production was laser and the sound samples with a synth was made to make it feel futuristic and spacey. Now it probably sounds, I wouldn't say dated, because it still takes you to a place, but dated compared to how it was at the time. Stage fright, 9 out of 10. And it doesn't stand a chance against living on a prayer. Um, living on a prayer song in itself is absolutely phenomenal. They actually wasn't going to use it. Richie went, I don't know about this, man. I, don't. Uh, I think it was John or, or vice versa. And um, they didn't really know about it. They was unsure. Because this song could have gone either way. It could have sounded really, really corny. Which it still does, but in a good way. Or really, really... Like, I think the production helps. The layers. They really filled it on that chorus. And it's probably the most memorable, cho memorable choruses of all time. Um, yeah, and... Even the final countdown doesn't beat Living on a Prayer for its storytelling. And using that. Everything about this song is just phenomenal, man. Um, a 10 out of 10. Straight 10. Just the bass. And then, you know. Gina works at Diner all day. The, the stories, the lyrics. I'm less about the lyrics as long as the song sounds good. Like I like the lyrics, but they don't define the song for me. 
Um, the song's got to rock first. The song has to have the right production and melody. And if the lyrics fit into that, fair enough. But everything about it is just... A slight jump meets the final countdown with Springsteen covering them. Like a va that's the way it goes with that sort of vibe I get. It's a song about hope. Um, and it's just a great chorus. 10 out of 10. Unforgettable. Gets played to death, but that's because it's a good song. Okay, next we've got Too Late for Love by Def Leppard. Somewhere in the distance, in the bell ring. Sound. Yeah, always tried sounding like Brian Adams did our Joe Elliott and all that American style, but it works for the time. And um, I love Too Late for Love. Too late, too late, too late for love. <laughs> yeah, um, whoa, maiden vibes again. Fantastic song, good layers, good atmosphere. Very dark, this album. Goes for that atmosphere. Um, again, good chorus. The down and out rock. Again, like that rat docking vibes. Too late for love. I would give a a seven, a seven or eight, a good eight. Okay, I'd say a seven. A seven's fair enough for too late for love. Next, we've got social disease. Now, personally, I don't get the hate. The only thing I can't stand is the intro because it always sounds like I'm listening to porn. You know what I mean? It's like, oh, damn it. Always did, so I always skip that part like... It is what it is. Call it a travesty, call it... It's a bar burner. It's, for me, it's a good song. Um, it's a six. It's not a one. It's not, it's, I think it's a six. It's a good bar burner. It's got good funky riffs. It's fun. It's nowhere near as good as the first three tracks. But it's catchy. I like it. I just don't see the hate for this song. I think it's really good. It's not as good as Too Late for Love by Lep. So I'd say we're neck and neck at the moment. Um, yeah, Too Late for Love caused death. Def Leppard back because it was 2 1 to Jovi, but now we're on a 2 2. One, uh, okay, so next we have Die Hard the Hunter by Def Leppard, which is an absolutely sensational song. With If you're into guitar, it's more spacey, futuristic. The production's sick and the, the atmosphere again. Five away! Far away! <laughs> yeah, and, and then the old. Riffing ambitious to say the least, and it put them in that we'd rather be the worst rock band than the best punk, and that they just wanted to be so ambitious and creative, and yet still pull a girl audience because of the pop melodies and the hooks and the look. And Die Hard the Hunter is a brilliant song. Um, it's a 9 out of 10 for me. It has it in the spades, just all the layers. It's more of a guitar man song, this more. You know, you're not going to be listening to this in the car much, like just to go to the shop. This is one you listen to on your own or play guitar with. It's for the geeks. But this gets a, um, I'd say it's a, it's a 9. It's a 9 out of 10. But it's facing Wanted Dead or Alive. So unfortunately... Bon Jovi swing it back um, because Wanted Dead or Alive I love um, seeing a million faces and I rock them all that's the great um, some, sometimes you tell the day by the bottle that you drink times when you're alone all you do is think simple Trying to be spring scene, bit of down and out again, but the old, the whole guitar, riff, the riddle at the beginning, and the way they utilised it live. There's only one winner, and Wanted Dead or Alive is a 10 out of 10 for me, just for everything it encompasses the intro, the cinematics, the chorus, 
and then the lead off seen a million faces it's like a chorus above a chorus it's just a good nuance it's just a good idiosyncratic sort of riff to sing live and it's great because it relates to who the crowd i think that's what bon jovi got more than say lep crowd relation lyrics have to sort of I've seen both live, but I think Jovi sort of touched on that and the writing a song for the crowd to sing and yourself, perfect. Wanted Dead or Alive has it all, from the riddle to the end. Everything, cinematics, 10 out of 10. So Bon Jovi are winning. Um, next we have Fooling. <laughs> Fooling by Def Leppard. I love the hook. Uh, do, 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 do. Very dark again, do, atmospheric, do, 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 do. and the build up. Do, 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 do. Does anybody out there? Do, do. And then, whoa, do, do, do. just got a light photograph, like stage right. Do, 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 do. The police vibes again, them melancholic riffs, little grooves they do. In fact, that's probably the worst part of the song. Uh, what takes it down to a nine? It could have been a ten. I think the chorus lets it down. It's on a ten. And then, they could have had like, Fooling, yeah. Fooling, da -da -da -da. That would have made it an eleven. But they didn't do that because they didn't have me. But I would have done that. Just gotta go. Then you really did. Fooling him. Da -da 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 -da. That would have been like Iron Maiden. That, that would have gone to number one on Billboard. But they didn't have me. Okay. Ten out, uh, nine out of ten fooling. Against Raise Your Hands, Bon Jovi. A fooling beats Raise Your Hands for me. Just, uh, But Raise Your Hands is a terrific song. Great song opener. Nothing amazing about it, apart from the fact that it's very high energy. Raise your hands when you want to let it go. Raise your hands. Intro. Does have a better chorus than fooling. Does have a great chorus. Whoa, raise your hands. But I prefer feeling just as a structured song. Raise your hands is just a straight up sports rocker. But raise your hands, I'd give a nine out of ten. So it's probably level with feeling in that. I do think they are both strong nines. Can't see any getting a ten, but they're both strong nines. Okay, this is where it gets a bit swings back in Leopard's way because without love by Bon Jovi I can't stand I like the guitar but the keyboard's just wimpy saved by the, mach the bell Michael Bolton shit you know when Zach Morris leaves um, Kelly Kaparski cheats on Zach Morris it's got that vibe Michael Bolton vibes and I'm not smelling without love whatsoever Nothing to get you through the night. Nah, I'm not. I don't like without love. It's one of them I always skip. So I'm gonna give it a, a five. Not like it at all. And then you've got Rock of Ages by Def Leppard. Phenomenal. Gordon Liebman, Louds and Logan. Offspring use it on um Pretty Fly for a White Guy. Wang does the voice actually. He must have done it while he was doing Shania Twain uh, later on in life. <laughs> anyway, um, yeah. Rock of Ages, simply a great song. Like Fooling, like Asmo and Monica, the gimmicky leopard, which would later be used in Let's Get Rocked. Um, rock of Age, rise up, get around. Ice hockey rock, like, burn it up, let's go for broke. Watch a night go up in smoke. Rock on, rock on, the rhyme of crazy, yeah. Damn it, Nate. Riff, riff, riddle, riddle, groove, groove. Everything is just forward, moving. And then rock of ages, doom, dan, 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 dan. still rolling. Absolutely sensational song, 10. 
there you go fun as hell 10 so i'd say it's back to leopard now and it faces it's yeah we've had rock of ages pisses on <laughs> uh, without love but yeah so next is i die for you by bon jovi good song in the world that don't know romeo and juliet bomb it's cow can't forget yeah um, i'd i die for you again that, that that's the lyric what stands out to everyone um might just say i'm sorry <laughs> great song i'd give it a eight out of ten um i die for you Baby, I die for you. Van Halen vibes again, but mixed with the typical metal chorus. Lovely song, great song, great arrangement. Um, quite dark as well. Going on the leopard vibes. Do, 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 very tense, and um, just a got good structure to it. Do, 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 do. Powerful riffs all over. Um, I die for you is a fun listen, and it's a very powerful song. I give this a an eight. It's an eight, not a nine or a ten, but definitely a strong eight. Next up, coming under fire by Def Leppard. Um, Anybody out there, you know you want to come to fire. Now I think the time period, um, this this was eighty three. Let um, Joby was eighty six, so they didn't come out at the same time. And coming under fire as that very AOR first album, Bon Jovi feel with um, "Come Back" do, 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 or that down and out AOR sound, which it doesn't sound as futuristic as the other songs. This sounds like it could have been written on high and dry. Um, but I like it. Is anybody out there? It's a very strong seven. Not an eight or a nine or a ten, but it's got a good chorus and under fire. Good hooks. But like a weaker version of like say your photographs and your two lates and your foolings and your rock of ages of the world. So it's a it's a seven out of ten. Facing and <laughs> so next we've got yeah so coming under fire does it beat I die for you no so on that I'd say I die for you is winning Bon Jovi lead again never say goodbye versus action not words and action not words is crap for me it sounds like something off hysteria like excitable or love not action at the end. Action, action, action now words. This is where the creativity is waning now. I think they've used the creativity in the first like other songs and action not words. I don't like it. It's just a Yeah. It's just not a very good song for me. It just lets it down. All the all the great melodies and then action. Action hours, da, 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 da. bland, bland chorus, which lets down the other melodies. So I'm giving this one a four out of ten. I don't like it. It sucks. And then never say goodbye. <laughs> it's a brilliant ballad. You lost my net, my backseat, baby. Maybe we used to talk about up the street and then um, the climatic end. Never say goodbye. They released this and it went to like 30 or something and I think they released it before they played Donington, uh, Monsters of Rock. Poor choice of single to release before you're about to headline an heavy metal festival. But I heard they rocked and everyone liked them above Dio even and they had to come on after Dio and a lot of good bands that day but Bon Jovi still stole it um, I think Metallica played that day as well but Bon Jovi just came and brought it and they brought the show his voice was steroided up because of all the overpowered singing um, but Never Say Goodbye is an excellent song 
um, cheesy, but like I'll be there for you that vibe. But it's corny, but it's a I think it's a really good song and the solo is great. And it pisses all over action, not words. If we're going on that, so the momentum's back. Um, and it's not a verse first because it's just a default order. But what I'm saying is, action note words is a four, and never say goodbye. I'd say is an eight out of ten, not a nine or a ten for me, but an eight. And Billy's got a gun and wild in the streets. Billy's got a gun. I like this song. Uh, it redeems the album, um, which fades after action not words. Sort of lets it down. Billy's got a gun. Great ending. Billy's got a gun, he's on the run. Do -do -do -do. He always had little cool, little intricate riffs, like funk, groovy as well. And, um, did you feel it in the air? Do -do 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 -do. Danger! Did -do -do. you feel it in the air? Whoa, whoa, whoa. Yeah, um, <laughs> I've done it a key higher, but Billy's got a gun, he's on the run. Good ender, good ender. Do, do, do. And the ending's quite colossal as well. An epic do, do, do. bit rap, bit macho, bit dockered, but better than all of that because the songwriting was just slightly better than both, a lot better. Uh, um, and everyone modelled themselves on this, like rat and docker. And this was the like blueprint for that. So did all then became baby leopards. With no spots. Great way to end it. Billy's get a gun. I give that a 7 out of 10. And at 10 for Bon Jovi. Track 10. Wild in the streets. Perfect closer. Perfect way to end an album. Absolutely brilliant. Starts the um, Slippery When Wet video on VHS. And you're like, that's what got me into him. Because you watch that and you you see that video and it just says, wow, a fun band, great song. Yeah, it has that Springsteen vibes, but we were cruising in the to the backbeat, making love in the backseat. Again, like never say goodbye there. But again, about the times, Leopard's lyrics don't really get any sort of social commentary, do they? They try to in Let's Get Rocked, but it's very poor songwriting. It's more futuristic vibes. Um, Wild in the Streets absolutely kills and how, absolutely ends it how it should, where you had a few dips with Without Love, maybe Social Disease, but the rest is killer. There's not much filler on Jovi where I'd say filler's the same, the filler on Leopard is action, not words. Possibly coming under fire, possibly. And Billy's got a gun if you're saying what are the weakest tracks, but Billy's got a gun is still a strong seven and Wild in the Streets is a ten for me. Nine or ten. So Bon Jovi win. Based on the score rate, it's nines out of ten. Slippery when wet wins this. I'm not going to leave you with the who's going to win. Slippery wins um, because their worst are better than Lep's worst and their best are better than Lep's best if you faced. Photograph beats you give love a bad name, but they're both still tens. Whereas Bon Jovi just seem to have more higher scores because Leopard's ones that suck, like action not words, sucks. Without love sucks for Jovi. But it's still a better song than Action Not Words. So, yeah, and I'm trying to find... like Every song on here is nearly brilliant, but almost every song on it, everything on here is like... Even the bad songs are still more polished in craft. Um, whereas this was experimenting a lot. And on Billy's Got a Gun and Action Not Words, it's good, but... I think they've used it up in the first half of the record. After Rock of Ages, the last three songs don't do it as justice, but still end it well. Whereas Jovi end on a high, I Die For You, Never Say Goodbye, and Wild In The Streets. 
I took out with our love and put Edge of the Broken Heart in there. Or instead of Social Disease. Um, we Own the Night would have been. We Rule the Night. That could have been on there. Off These are the old demos. A million thousand Bon Jovi fans can't be wrong. <laughs> they can't. <laughs> they can now. If they buy a Bon Jovi album. The new one. But back then they couldn't. Okay, I've compared the two. Slippery, just edges out for me. It's just got more, I wouldn't call it variety, more structure to the whole album. It's more, it has more of a polished, like a well thought out approach. Whereas this was thought out on getting hits. And then once they had the seven hits, the other three are like, they'll do. They'll make it up. I think there's more filler on Pyromania, but. There's not much on either. Two absolutely insane albums. And on any given day, they're both as good as each other. But I prefer Slippery. I think it has more A-makers. But Pyromania is sensational as well. Do you agree or disagree? For me, it's more... Better songs as opposed to more creation. This is more creative. This has the powerful, more powerful songs overall. Memorable. Thanks for watching, guys. Tell me what you think. I'm going to do New Jersey versus Hysteria soon. Get your comments in. Who wins out? Was I right or was I wrong in your opinion? I enjoyed doing this. Goodbye.